Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to be able to share this opportunity with staff. We have an acquaintance with us. Um, he's sitting here to my left. He is the president, I'm sure many of you know him, of our SUNY Sullivan Community College, which everyone's very aware of the very valuable presence that college has in our community. The fact that we have our Hope Farm over there, their nursing students come over here for clinical experience. We have staff that have enrolled in a DSP apprenticeship program over there um, in collaboration with both the college and the Department of Labor. And there's all sorts of points of connection that we have with them. And they are just such a strong contributing community member. And we are very happy to have such a close relationship with them. I obviously look forward to doing all sorts of additional things in the future. In addition, Jay happens to be a board member on the New Hope Community Board. We were very fortunate to have him join us and be voted in this past December. So we really count that as tremendous value that gets added to the composition of our board. So he's here to talk about some very exciting programs that the college has and also about the fact that there's going to be an opportunity for free tuition for people that are eligible come this fall. And I've asked Amy Leroy, our Director of Training, and all of you know and love Amy, to facilitate this exchange with Jay. I just wanted to do the initial introduction, so hopefully this, this news will be meaningful to you, and you may have a family member, a friend, a neighbor uh, share the information because this is really great stuff and we're hoping to um, get the word out in terms of what's available at our local college. So Jay, um, Amy, I'll let you guys take it away. All right, absolutely. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. We just wanna let you know, everybody is muted. Um, it just kind of saves in some confusion and background noise, but if you would use the chat function, which should be in the upper bar there for any questions that you might have, and we hope that you do have some questions, we will make sure at the very end that we um, ask those questions and get those answered for you, okay? Um, I think when I first sent this out to all the staff, um, we we did kind of label it as free tuition. Sure. Um, did ask them to circle back around with the qualifications for that. Um, but I do think the the promise scholarship that's being offered is a wonderful thing. You know, I, I with my own children, I tried to instill the importance of furthering their education with some degree of success. But I think what happens is, um, you know, people look at the the cost of tuition and other things, and and that is the major roadblock. So if you wouldn't mind sharing some information about that uh, promise scholarship, that would be fantastic. Sure. Sure. So uh, the way that came about was obviously, you know, it's in the news on a regular basis, the student debt crisis in this country, yes. $1.75 trillion is held in student debt by recent college graduates. Uh, that, that fact alone is enough to uh, warrant some solution for that. But the consequences of that, I think, are also really far reaching. So having debt when you graduate from college means that you are less likely to purchase a home, less likely to start a business, less likely to be able to have children or move on because you're saddled with this incredible debt, which is you used it to pay for something incredibly valuable, but it's still there and it's untangible. You can't live in a college degree or drive one to work or pay $5 a gallon for gas. So um i went to the county legislature and i proposed an idea that what this really works out to is a last dollar scholarship most people that attend suny sullivan and most people that attend college anywhere in the country are eligible for some level of financial aid whether that's federal money um, through the pell grant program other kinds of grants and scholarships or in new york state the tap program the tuition assistance program that is eligible for all new yorkers so what this does is combined with those ends up at a position where if you attend SUNY Sullivan this fall as a recent high school graduate, so you're graduating in June or completing a homeschool program this summer or completing a GED this year, you will be eligible to attend SUNY Sullivan with no tuition or fees. That doesn't mean that college isn't going to have some costs associated with it, but the tuition and fees part will be completely met. There will be some books probably, and we're working very hard uh, with our faculty to develop what's called OER, or um, they're basically free customized online educational resources 
that we use in lieu of textbooks so that there's it reduces the cost of textbooks. The other thing that we're doing is offering for Sullivan County residents a deep discount if you would like to live in our dorms. So mm -hmm. with the cost of gas at you know five plus a gallon um, and if you live more than a short distance from the college you're going to end up spending a fair amount of money on uh, on fuel. So what we're doing is saying if you want to come live in our dorms we'll give you a reduced rate it's just slightly less than half it's $1,600 a semester to live in the dorms and it doesn't really take very long to burn $1,600 oh, worth sure. of gas. So the other benefit though for that is so you'll have tuition and fees taken care of you'll have a deeply reduced uh, price to have living arrangements, but you'll also then become a more integrated part of the college community. You know, be able to participate in athletic events, be able to use our weight rooms, our cardio rooms. There's a, a huge advantage to living on campus. We have movie nights, we have all kinds of activities for students, and unfortunately, commuter students also, uh, often miss out on those. So it's a really, it's a great opportunity to have that I went away to college experience without really going away very far, still be able to go home on the weekends, do your laundry or get your dad to do your laundry as my daughters did. Um, but yeah, I think it's a it's a great opportunity for for this year's graduating class. And I really, really want to thank the county legislature for supporting us in this. Is there uh, any type of income limit for for the student or or the the family in order to take advantage of this scholarship? No, there okay. is not. The only requirement is that the student have, as I said, graduated in this this academic year, completed a homeschool program that okay. is from the state, and uh, or completed a GED. After that, just fill out our normal financial aid form, which you know is what gives access to virtually all kinds of uh, financial aid available to any student anywhere, and then we'll take the rest from there. Okay, and also I, because we support people with disabilities, I probably would be remiss if I didn't ask you this, but students that are coming out of high school that have had like an IEP or they've needed some type of accommodation, the college can help support them with that as well. That shouldn't be a deterrent from them uh, applying. No, not at all, though. It, that's actually a very, very good question. Students um, and their families are not often aware that the law that provides accommodations or reasonable accommodations in an educational setting changes drastically when a student uh, graduates from from high school. So for students in high school, the responsibility is of the school district to identify students with needs mm -hmm. and uh, and provide accommodations for those. So that means that you know they'll go through a, an educational psychology evaluation. That person will then prescribe some whatever the accommodations that would make a meaningful uh, help for that student. Okay. When a student transitions to post-secondary education to a college environment, that responsibility falls solely on the student. So if, if a student with an IEP is leaving high school, I often recommend, and it's a little late for this right now, but I often recommend that they get a new psych evaluation or um, any kind of you know evaluation that would allow us to know what, what kinds of accommodations would be required for a student as soon as possible because that way we have fresh information and people change and you sure. know, their needs change over time and we're aware of that um, that all of that would need to be provided to the college and then you would work with our disability services coordinator to um, to get the accommodations that that you need well, that's very helpful because I do think that's another stumbling block. Kids think, well, all these accommodations that I've had that have helped me be successful through my entire, mm -hmm. you know, school career are now going to end. So I, I think that's important that that carries on. It, it really is. And in fact, outside of even just the accommodation side of things, I mean, many times even students who are graduating from high school with, you know, the, the requirement for this is a 70 GPA, mm -hmm. a 70 percent average. Um, even those students often need other supports that aren't really uh, they don't fall under like ADA or 504, but they are still things that we can do like additional tutoring services, developmental ed classes that, you know, get you up to speed with math and English, those kinds of things. And we have offer all of those uh, to our students. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Um, I'm not trying to steal all the questions that might come through the chat, but I'm kind of a questioning person. Um, if someone gets the scholarship and starts in the fall, mm -hmm and for some kooky reason can't go in the spring because I know it's a year, are they able to con get that other um, semester like the following fall or has to be it right in? For this program that we've just started, it would have to be consecutive. Consecutive. That was the uh, one I was trying to find. Thank yeah, you very much. No, that, that's fine. But I, 
you know, and I can't make a promise because it really is up to the county legislature how this would work. Sure. But I think from conversations that I've had with them, um, if this program proves to be successful and, you know, the county's interested in it for a whole variety of reasons that I can go into in a, in a moment. But if it is successful, and I think it will be, I have a great deal of confidence that it would continue for a second year. And in that case, um, then, you know, the student could pick back up. Okay. Yeah, that would be awesome because I know sometimes things happen and then they think they're going to miss out on that opportunity. Yeah, so the county appropriation is just for this year, but okay. we have a good deal of confidence that we'll get it appropriated next year. Oh, well. that would be great. That would be great. Awesome. So the direct support certificate, I'm going to segue into sure. that direct support certificate, um, which I think is really wonderful because, you know, I, there's really no niche for the direct support professional. Um, and, well, there you know, there are some, but it's not as prevalent, certainly in, in college, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping you could share a little bit about that certificate program, because I think there are several DSPs that we we have here or that would be thinking about joining us that would be interested in that. Sure. So the the uh, the DSP certificate, you know, our when we started working on this uh, with folks here at New mm -hmm. Hope, but also at the Center for Discovery and, and ARC, uh, was really to provide an academic basis for practitioners. So there, you know, the hands-on work is obviously critically important, but a little bit of academic and theoretical background helps inform that practical work. And that was the intention behind this. Additionally, by having it be part of a registered apprenticeship program, it provides an avenue for a very affordable uh, way to access college again mm -hmm. and be paid while you're doing on the job training and doing the work. So it's, um, like many apprenticeships, we just we have one with the Carpenters Union now. It's a similar kind of program where uh, members of the Carpenters Union who are in the apprenticeship program can also complete uh, an associate in occupational studies in green building technology to learn that other side of the job that you don't necessarily learn while you're on the job, or you probably will, but it will take longer. And it mostly comes from having conversations with other workers and and your staff. Sure, and, uh, but this. It's a shortcut to those kinds of knowledge base. Okay. Um, and and how many credits would that take for them to get that certificate? I know. I'm sorry. That's quite all right. I mean, I'll look on my phone. Okay. I already have it brought up. So no, I, I just was I curious, just because. I mean, it sounds like it would require quite a few. So there are. It's it's. 10 classes so okay. that's that it can be completed in one year of full-time study okay um, and, and i'll just kind of go through some of them it includes things like general psychology introduction to human services you know what are the agencies that hire people in the dsp role what what's the sure. backdrop for that um introduction to behavioral principles again this kind of a theoretical grounding in the sorts of things that you're going to deal with on the job but sure. it's, it's not it doesn't stand in for the practical work, but it gives you a way to do the work from a new perspective, which I think is really, um, really important. It includes professional ethics, um, an introduction into developmental disabilities, uh, and then a liberal arts election and, and composition. And so the idea is that people in this role, uh, you know, they have, there's a, there is a type of writing that is required. Yes, <laughs> and yes there is. it's really important for people to have those writing skills. So we threw comp in there as well so that they, you know, can write the notes that they need that are really critical for continued care and support. No, absolutely. That makes total sense. And one of the things that I that I uh, talk to the new orientees about as, as we're talking about being a direct support professional is that many of them have never been even referred to as a professional before. And what does that mean? So certainly by looking at uh, the courses that are offered through this, when they come out, hopefully they will feel more like a professional. Mm -hmm. They certainly have a lot of tools in their toolbox to be a professional um, and carry that through the job that they do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that that sounds like a wonderful, I hope that has that started already or is that it, for fall? It has started. It we has. graduated, I think, our first person this past May. Oh, okay. Very uh, good. Yeah. So we're excited and hope to see the program grow because obviously in Sullivan County, this industry is such a major employment sector for us. And the, you know, the more we can do again to professionalize the staff is fantastic. It, it helps the residents, it helps the county and um, it helps the college, frankly. So. No, nope. hey, well, that, that's a true statement, but all the way around, everybody wins in it. So, 
So the nursing program, and I say it that way because it just seems like everybody is, well, we, we obviously are scrambling for direct support professionals as well, but um, nursing as well throughout this county, I think throughout this nation, to be quite honest with you, um, nursing is a critical shortage area. So it's encouraging like within our back door to have a program. Um, yeah, it, it, I would, I don't want to sound like I'm going to overblow it, but I would say that honestly, uh, the shortage of nurses is at a critical point mm -hmm. in not just the county, but in the country. Um, it's definitely on the mind of people at the state level in terms of how do we fund expansion in our nursing programs to get more people through the pipeline. Um, you know, the, the state also then mandating that people that are in practice as an RN need to get a BSN within five years of completion of their RN program furthers that yes, crisis point. <laughs> this is true. Um, and so we are, we're, and then we're in a situation where it's, because nurses are in such a high demand and because the salaries are so high, our nurses, when they graduate, typically make more than um, a starting nurse educator would make for us. So, Ouch. yeah, so it, it puts people in a position if if you are a nurse and qualified to teach nursing, you're more likely to go work as mm -hmm. a nurse, especially as a traveling nurse for 150 an hour, 160 an hour mm -hmm. versus, you know, teaching. So we're trying to sort that out and hopefully the state will be able to provide some support so we can pay our nurse educators something that is comparable or closer to what they would uh, be able to make in practice. Uh, we graduated just over 40 nurses this year. Oh, wow. Which is great. Um, because of the shortage of instructional staff, it's probably not going to be as big next year, but we're working on that. And hopefully we can continue to grow because it really is uh, such a critical need here in Sullivan County. No, it definitely is. So how long does it typically take um, for them to go through, move through that program? So if a student comes in and they have completed um, higher level science and math in high school, uh, then it can take two years. Oh, okay. If not, then they're going to have to do some prerequisite work in, in primarily in the sciences, lab sciences and in math in order to be able to enter the program. There is an exam, a qualifying exam for entrance. It's our only competitive admissions program. But again, that just kind of gives the student a, a bit of knowledge in what they can do to get themselves prepared. If, if anybody on this call has students who are um, in I would say as early as seventh grade and have any interest in going into nursing, take as much math and science as you can in high school because it'll shorten the time you to till you can be a nurse and it will um, it'll just honestly it just simplifies everyone's life. So and I understand, you know, kids want to shy away from that, but you know, like there's sciences in high school students have the choice of taking like human ecology versus a lab bio take the lab bio okay. <laughs> every time. Sure. Absolutely. Now, do you, do you guys let, try to help the graduating nurses align with an employer or is that just your, here's your and go for it? So uh, because nurses are in such high demand, you don't have to do not that. a lot of work that needs to happen. Um, they, part of the nursing program is obviously a clinical sure. path rotation through various organizations. So they're a known quantity. They've been exposed. Everyone knows them on the floor. Like it, they, they graduate with a job before they're done. All right. I was going to say we would just hang outside like the door there or something, <laughs> but we'll, we'll come up with something. Okay. And you also have a CNA program as well. We do have a CNA program. We have a medicist program as well, and we have respiratory therapy. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so, you know, if there's, a, there's a lot of different avenues for people who are interested in the healthcare professions. Yeah. I've noticed for some reason over the last several months that some of the new orientees, when they, when we introduce ourselves and whatnot, they, they say that they used to be a CNA or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be a common thread. I don't know if they're coming through your program or not, but that seems to be a common. Some are. BOCES used to have a CNA program. I don't think they do anymore. Um, so there's a couple of different ways that people would have accessed that curriculum, sure. but um, yeah, we're, we, you know, I personally, I think we're under enrolled and I would like to see more students go through that path. It can also be a stepping stone as a way to test the waters a little bit to mm -hmm. see if, you know, you might ultimately want to go on and, and uh, earn a nursing degree. So there's, you know, there's a good reason to do it. Plus, it it, it does increase your salary and earning capacity over not having it. No, that's true. And, th and those skills can certainly be used here as a direct support professional Absolutely. as well. So it's not it's not a wasted, not no, wasted not time for sure. Not at all. My mom was a CNA, so I can 
Absolutely. You got to plug it where you can, right? Okay. So we have a couple questions. Um, first being for the students that are going to be taking advantage of living on campus, would New Hope Community be able to place recruitment materials in the move-in packet since we are located so closely to the SUNY Sullivan campus? Absolutely, yes. That, that would be a good thing. It's a score. Okay, next one. Jay, are you able to pass on the new nursing administrative staff at SUNY Sullivan to Debbie for our nursing team to get in touch with? Yes, I will absolutely follow up on that. Okay, and I think there's a, is, oh, someone's typing. I think what happened was I asked all the questions. I should have not done that. I'm sorry. Um, we, well, yeah, we're not going to have the LPN for the fall. Unfortunately, oh, okay. again, it's a staffing issue. Uh, it is really, I know, I know I'm preaching to the choir. If you talk to anybody who employs people in the county. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's hard. No, you anyone. can't. I mean, the hospitals in the same circumstance. It's, it's very, very difficult. Um, the other thing though that I, I did want to mention uh, before I forget is that summer, our summer second summer program starts July 5th. Oh, okay. And we offer uh, a discount. So it's just one third tuition to attend in the summer. And it's a great way to get a jump start on the fall. Okay. Most of the courses are online in the summer, except for some lab sciences, like, like a bio. So if somebody's interested in thinking about nursing, this is a way to make sure that you have the, the prereqs that you would need. Oh, okay. And that starts when, I'm sorry? When? July 5th. July 5th. Okay. And you said more information about the CNA? We are, and, and, and the LPN program. So we are starting an LPN program. We were given a gift um, when the Roscoe Nursing Home was sold to develop a, an LPN program here in Sullivan County. And then we also have a bridge program for current LPNs who want to go for the RN. So you can, uh, you know, because your LPN provides you with a lot of the same material as the first year of nursing, you can start and it's much less time to complete the RN. Oh, okay. Um, and we usually start that cohort in January. Uh, so you still have some time if, if there's any LPNs that are interested in, in doing that. Uh, the, not finding my, uh, program sheet for the CNA, but I can, I'll send a link uh, after the meeting. And if you guys could share okay. it. That would no, be absolutely. I mean, there are certainly numerous opportunities within that field for sure. Absolutely. For people to take advantage of. Okay. Are the new free tuition opportunities being funded by New York State? So um, what this is, is really a partnership between some federal money that's available to students, state money that's available to students, and then the county picking up the difference. Oh, okay. A little combination then of yeah. resources. Tying together all of the available funds to make it really benefit students as much as possible. No, absolutely. Um, are there any tuition assistance programs for people that graduated from high school years ago? Absolutely. So Pel the federal Pell Grant program, and these are income uh, based. So it, it, it's the amount you'll receive is kind of based on a ratio of what they call cost of attendance to your earnings and expected family contribution. So, um, you know, we're a relatively inexpensive college compared to, you know, I just found out Syracuse is $72,000 a year. Uh, so that, that, that's painful. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of money. Um, and the reality of it is, and this is where I, you know, I think it's important for people to realize, even if you want to go get a bachelor's degree, start with us because you're, it, we're six, less than $6,000 a year for tuition. So sure. you can get the first two years of college done for twelve thousand yeah. dollars as opposed to seventy two thousand dollars a year. Right. So times two. Yeah, you end up saving, you know, one hundred and forty five thousand dollars all told. So I would say that. But to go back to the question, yes, there is federal Pell Grant money that's available. There is also um, the state TAP money is really considered um, an entitlement program in New York State. So there's you know, it is every student in New York State is eligible for some amount of tuition assistance through the state. Okay. Um, and that doesn't matter how long ago you went to college or graduated from college. Um, and those, the, none of these even matter if you didn't complete high school ever and earned a GED, which is how I ended up going to college. So it can be done. And I, I would encourage anyone who wants to further themselves to attend if you possibly can. Okay. Oh, yes. Yep. I printed that out. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> yes, and uh, as um, Deb said in the background, that uh, New Hope does offer uh, tuition assistance um, for staff as well, something to definitely look into because um, that is extremely helpful. 
Um, is the free tuition only for one year? And is it offered to residents outside of Sullivan County? So uh, the first question is, yes, right now it is only for one year, but we're really hopeful and have a good deal of confidence that it will continue uh, into at least a second year. And honestly, I think if we can demonstrate that this is a, a benefit to Sullivan County mm -hmm. residents, there's no reason why um, why it's not something that the county would be interested in as long as they could afford it, I'm sure. Um, and then the second part of that question, yes, you need to be a resident of Sullivan County. And uh, if you're if you're falling in the category of a recent high school graduate, you need to have graduated from a high school in Sullivan County. And hopefully if they do extend that to the second year, hopefully whomever took advantage of this yeah. scholarship the first year would maybe be able to do it the they second would, year. Yeah, it would be absolutely. great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think you just answered this. I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, is this is this free tuition only for one year? And at this time you said yes, correct? Correct. Um, or does it cover the full two-year degree? So it would just depend, I guess, like you said, next year if those funds are if, available. If it's available from the county legislature, then we would certainly want to continue. Yep, absolutely. Okay. One one other thing that I, I we have a couple more minutes. Yep, and I absolutely. People have things that they need to do, but I I do want to talk about why I think this scholarship program is so important. Um, you know, we all hear all the time that. Sullivan County has some of the worst public health outcomes in uh, in New York State. Yes, ranked I think we're 61 or something. Right? Uh, you know, we've all, we can all recite the mantra at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but there is so much evidence that counties or municipalities or areas with a higher level of degree attainment have much, much better health outcomes. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of reasons why. Obviously, education is just a positive thing. It makes people, um, you know, more knowledge you have, the better in control of your life you're going to be. And, you know, there's reduced rates of smoking, reduced rates of cancer, reduced rates of high blood pressure, reduced rates of domestic violence. All of those tie back to an educated community. And so anything we can do as part of our mission at, at SUNY Sullivan to get more people educated, it's it's critically important. One of the things that as I was researching it that I hadn't really thought about, but makes really good sense in hindsight is um, people who have a college degree have jobs that typically provide health insurance hmm. or more often provide access to a, a joint or an employee provided uh, health plan. That has a profound impact on a person's personal life and their family's well-being. If you can take your kid to the doctor without worrying about what it's going to cost mm -hmm. you, or take yourself to the doctor for an annual checkup without worrying about what it's going to cost you. That is incredibly profound on an individual basis, but it it ro really rolls up to a community basis. So I, you know, th these are the reasons why I think it's really important, and I think that the the county legislature sees that it's not just about you know providing greater access to education. It's really about we're all going to benefit from this. It really does make a difference in all of our lives. No, it definitely doesn't. I would not have actually considered those things that might be seen as like behind the screen, you know, right. of things that you could benefit from. But I know just just from talking to staff here a lot, that is the hesitancy. I, I don't have health insurance, so therefore I, I can't go or I don't want to pay that bill. And then so something that could have been right. addressed right away goes on. Now it's a bigger problem. Exactly. So know that that's a tremendous asset to be able to have something like that. I don't think we received any more questions. So I think we will probably wrap it up, but thank you so much because to be honest Absolutely. with you, I didn't realize, I mean, I think that the college is a hidden gem that we've got to shine a light on more because there are so many things that are, that are the being offered. Because they put it a mile off the road. <laughs> so no one can see it, but that's a whole other. We should have big lights or something. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I, I do think it's, I mean, I, I got some wonderful feedback when I put the email out, especially about the scholarship. I mean, the other things are fantastic, but especially the scholarship. I know there was some boohooing about that. It didn't apply to someone that graduated last year, but yeah. you know, it, it, at least it's a, it's a foot up for, for those students that are, that are coming out of high school this year. And we're maybe like, Ooh, don't want to go, can't afford it, whatever. And, yeah. and now this gives them an open door to do so. So thank yeah. you so much. We really appreciate the time you took with us thanks, today. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate it. Yes, you can crash the ending.
All right, guys, before you all click off, I just wanted to crash crash the ending, as I said, and say thank you so very, very much, Jay. It, it just, you know, it really is. I love that you said it was a hidden gem. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we want to get rid of that word hidden. Oh, yes. It's a gem. Yes. But, you know, I, and I'm sure, Jay, I hope that you would agree with me. But, you know, it's so cool to have an organization like us that's so mission driven with a very, very good purpose. And as well, the college was such an incredibly meaningful purpose as well. And everything that you said, Jay, in terms of how it really improved outcomes and quality mm -hmm. of life and health wellness it just goes all around and it's just so important for so many reasons and i would think that if we had thoughts or ideas in terms of training needs or educational needs that really speak to something specific to Sullivan County mm -hmm. workforce, et cetera, et cetera, that I know that you are excellent about having an open and ongoing dialogue. A absolutely. And I think that um, being on our board as well, mm -hmm. he's really getting to know New Hope community to a greater degree than even what he knew prior, although I think we've always been working on a very good relationship. Yeah, so I would just encourage everyone, if you have any thoughts or ideas, whether it be to Amy or myself, in terms of, you know, connecting with Jay or others at the college, sure. I would absolutely encourage that because we're in this together. I think we're all committed to lifting each other up and being strong, really involved community members for the betterment of the health and welfare of Sullivan County. Very much so. so. I, I would encourage you. I saw a sign as I was walking in. Um, there, there's several dates that people can uh, volunteer at Hope Farm, mm -hmm. which is on our campus. Mm -hmm. If that's the first way that you get to see our campus, right. great. I would encourage anyone. It's beautiful. Um, Reagan does a great job. It's it's just a, it's an amazing resource, and people should come and check it out. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this was fantastic. Yes, I hope was. that everybody. I'm sure you did found it informative. So again, thank you very much, Jay, and thank yes. you, Amy. Absolutely. Great job. Thank you. Thank you all.